testifying to the Lord Jesus Christ is so important that we testify about God and we have to profess with our mouth that Jesus Christ is not just Saviour, but Jesus Christ is Lord, Lord of our lives, that now we believe that God is in control of our lives. So important. And that's what happened here. Philip was walking along and uh, he came up to this uh, Ethiopian and uh, that's what happened. But it was, this, it was the angel of the Lord that told him to go there. Arise and go toward the south along the road which goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So, so the angel of the Lord told him to get up and go down the road because there's, there's a God appointment coming. You need to get up and go down the road. And so he did. And then he saw this man from Ethiopia on a chariot. And then the Holy Spirit said to him, go and chase it, get in front of that chariot, stop that chariot. And away he went. He jumped in front of the chariot and he heard the Ethiopian reading the scriptures. But he didn't know what he was reading. So he was obviously seeking something. And, and when we are out there and somebody starts to ask questions about God, they may actually put it in the form of an objection about God or, an, you know, something that they have objected to about the Christian faith or about God. That is an opportunity for us to speak about God. And that's what Philip did. And then, lo and behold, the eunuch says to Philip, well, here's some water. Is there any reason why I shouldn't get baptised? And Philip says, no, let's go do it, brother. Let's just go baptise you. You know, let's get it done. And so he did. And the minute they, they'd been bat they baptised, baptised him, the minute he came up out of the water, he was transported away by the Holy Spirit to Azotus. Just like that. And the eunuch was like, didn't see him anymore. And you know, that's what happens sometimes when we are attended and ministered to by angels. That sometimes we think we're entertaining men and women and we're actually entertaining angels. And the amount of accounts that I've heard that people are in trouble and an angel comes, they think it's a man or a woman, and then suddenly they turn around once something's happened and they're gone. And they're like, they couldn't have just disappeared. And they have. You know, I do believe we have guardian angels. I believe I have a guardian angel all the time. God, my guardian angel often makes ways for me and takes people out of my path. People just get moved over when I'm doing God's work. It just happens that way. It's really strange. And after a while, you come to, to, to see it and understand it. Initially, it's a bit weird, and you think, hmm, that's really strange. That person was really persecuting me or, or coming against me, and then suddenly they moved out of the way. Oh, OK, you just kind of log it. But when it happens time and time and time and time again, it's quite surprising how, <laughs> how things work that way. And you just know that there's something far deep. It's not just coincidence. It, it, it's, it's a God appointment, if you like. OK, so we'll just move on. But basically what happened is that Philip opened his mouth, and guess what? Philip bore fruit. Philip showed compassion for this eunuch, showed compassion in the sense that he tried to help the eunuch to understand the scriptures, because he didn't understand, and he preached to him, says here, in verse 35, he opened his mouth and beginning at this scripture that the eunuch has been reading, he preached Jesus to him. And that's what we're supposed to do, and that's bearing fruit. That's what we're told is bearing fruit, is loving people and telling them about what God's done for them. That is our fruit that we bear. And therefore what happens is we bear fruit by our actions. What happens is that people get saved. People become believers. People actually make a profession of faith. People actually come to God through our preaching, through our, the preaching of our word. And that's us bearing fruit for Christ. We start off as, as children in the faith. We have the milk of the gospel. Then we come... We become brothers and sisters. We become young men and young women in the faith. 
And what happens is that we get to a point that once we've had the milk, we then we then seek solid food. And we want to know the mature things about God and, and the things of God. And we start coming alongside people and helping them to understand as well. And there, there's a kind of growing up that takes place. And then it says, the word says we mature, we become fathers, fathers and mothers in the faith. So what happens then is we, we beget spiritual children. We bear fruit. We, we, we suddenly realize we have a ministry. Hallelujah. And people get touched by our lives and what we say and what we teach. And, and by the way, we help people and therefore we bear fruit. <clears throat> And that's what, that's what Philip was doing as an evangelist. And then we come into the Gospel of John. And here we see that God is in control. God, we're told here, is the vine dresser. And he expects us to bear fruit. And Jesus says in verse 5, at the end of verse 5, he says... For without me you can do nothing. So we're told here in these verses that we're powerless without God. Powerless without God with us. In the same way that David stood before Goliath and said, I've got God at my side. What have you got, Philistine? Jesus says the very same thing. For without me... You can do nothing. You are powerless. And we're also told here in these verses, keeping God's commands, you will have joy, and your joy will remain, and we will be full. This is from John's Gospel, and chapter 15, verses 1 to 18. And this is what we're talking about here, is about bearing fruit, about God being the vine dresser, and that every branch in me, he says, that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. So there is a refining process that goes on. There is a pruning process that goes on that you will find that God starts to, to alter things around you and in your life. That you are drawn to cut things off and to grow and bear fruit in certain directions and it says that God is the one who prunes so by God bringing things about sometimes so that things change for you things become different for you that maybe something that you were doing that wasn't really honouring to God God will in some way close off that door for you or open a door which is more positive and give you a new direction and you can either follow it or still try and go your own way so, so God actually is the one who prunes us and he, he guides us all the time so this is where we have to be really sensitive to the power of the Holy Spirit we have to listen for God's voice, you know, because God doesn't just boom out of the heavens like he did with the Lord Jesus Christ when he got baptised in the Jordan. That was a very special occasion. But normally, he speaks to us on the inside. And it's the same with Satan. Satan doesn't come to us with a pitchfork and, and, and prod us and, and attack us that way and tell us, speak to us. No, he talks to us in our mind. He, he puts suggestions in our mind. You've seen those pictures sometimes where you've got an angel on one side and a little devil on the other side, and he's talking into you and saying, no, you should do this and do that. And the angel says, no, 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 I don't think you should do that. Well, it's a bit like that, really, which is why that is a kind of typical way of, of, of kind of showing what happens. So we're not necessarily hearing it on the outside, but God is speaking to us through that still, small voice on the inside. Sometimes he speaks through our conscience. Sometimes he just pricks our conscience and says, uh-uh, I don't think so. Um, no. A bit like a child, go up to the plug. No. Smack your hands. No. Yeah. And we go, yeah, I'm going to touch it anyway. <laughs> but no, but God is good with us, you know. 